California is running out of water. The American West uses more water each year than is replenished by snow and rain. It's America's desert. California's drought is getting worse. The indigenous population of the American West was about 1 million. Today, the population is nearly 80 million. The water crisis has resulted in state governments restricting water usage. Recent droughts have dropped California's sources of water to the lowest in record history. In 2021, the governor of California asked residents to voluntarily reduce their water use by 15%. That executive order specifically will lay out um, a framework to encourage voluntary water uh, conservation efforts. In 2022, Southern California residents were restricted from watering outside more than two days per week. And reducing the number of days that you can water your lawn from three days to two. So how did America's paradise enter into a state of water crisis? One reason is that most of the Western United States is desert. The current civilization of over 80 million people in this area of the world, irrigating land, growing crops, and consuming water is less than 100 years old. The romantic idea of the West as this area, rich in natural resources, a beautiful, sunny, and bountiful paradise is a myth. So where does a desert get its water from? California receives 75% of its rain and snow north of Sacramento, but 80% of California's water demand comes from the southern two-thirds of the state. Southern California receives 25% of its water from the Colorado River via the Colorado River Aqueduct. The aqueduct brings water from the Colorado River across the Mojave Desert to Los Angeles. The system is 242 miles of aqueduct, pumping plants, reservoirs, and tunnels. 30% of Southern California's water comes from the Northern Sierra region through the State Water Project, consisting of 700 miles of open canals and pipelines, including the 444-mile California Aqueduct. The remaining 45% comes from a mix of what the Metropolitan Water District considers local supplies which includes the city of Los Angeles's Eastern Sierra deliveries, as well as recycling, desalination, and groundwater supplies. The Colorado River and its reservoirs of Lake Powell and Lake Mead have long been in a drought, and California isn't the only state who uses this river. Six other states, Arizona, Colorado, Nevada, New Mexico, Utah, and Wyoming use water from the Colorado River, as well as 30 federally recognized tribal nations in two Mexican states. The Colorado River Compact of 1922 divided the water rights of the Colorado River into upper basin and lower basin states. A problem with this allocation is that more water was allocated to states than flows through the river. The river provides drinking water to 40 million people and irrigates millions of acres of crops. So why did a metropolis grow in a desert? Populations have historically grown around areas rich in water resources, but California, Arizona, Nevada, New Mexico and Colorado disregarded this human phenomenon, instead electing to settle in areas in larger numbers than local water sources could support. As a result, they lobbied the federal government to spend billions of dollars to dam rivers, create reservoirs, then pump water from those reservoirs hundreds of miles through the desert, over mountains, to irrigate desert land to grow crops. The American West explorers of the 19th century described the West as a desert arid plains. When it did rain, it resulted in dangerous floods. There were no trees in the Great Plains, and the rapids in Colorado were nearly untraversable. In Nevada and Arizona, desert was the dominant landscape, lacking soil suitable for growing food, wood for fire, or water to drink. Western explorers wrote about nearly impassable mountain ranges and grizzly bears. It wasn't a resource-rich area ripe for settling. Those who did move west in the late 1800s were fearless danger seekers looking to trap beavers or strike gold. This isn't just the opinion of white settlers. People indigenous to the American West were nomadic and didn't farm specific acres year after year after year as white settlers did. In California, San Francisco had gold, a natural port, and became the natural terminus of the railroad. Civilization in San Francisco made sense. Los Angeles and Southern California, on the other hand, are dry, had no railroad, and was referred to as a vile little dump. Only a small portion of California could be self-sufficient when it comes to water resources. California receives the most amount of water from the Colorado River out of all the states, with an annual entitlement of 4.4 million acre-feet. 
about 2.5 million acre feet of that goes to the Imperial Irrigation District, one of the nation's largest agricultural areas and a major producer of alfalfa and lettuce. Much of the rest goes to the Metropolitan Water District, which supplies imported water to cities in Southern California. It's not the residents who use all this water, it's agriculture. In fact, 70% of the water pulled from the Colorado system is for agriculture. California farms use four times as much water as California cities and industries do. The top water using activity in California is growing alfalfa, a protein rich type of hay used to feed farm animals like pigs and cows. So what's the solution? This water crisis will continue to worsen if demand for water continues to outpace the supply of water. While the immediate solution that comes to mind is to never have subsidized a metropolis and mega agricultural industry in a desert that was unsustainable unless the federal government spent billions of dollars to dam almost every river in the western United States and pump water from Colorado to California, well, it's too late because that's already been done. There are now generations of farmers and their families who rely on agriculture in California. Simply turning off the water there and growing in areas of the country that make more sense from a financial, environmental, and engineering perspective probably isn't an option. California is now one of the most productive agricultural regions in the world. What is being done is conservation of water, trying to reduce consumption so the water levels in Lake Mead can be retained. In May of 2023, California, Nevada, and Arizona reached an agreement to cut their water use by at least 3 million acre feet through the end of 2026 in exchange for compensation for farmers. While this doesn't solve the crisis, it's not insignificant. That's enough water to supply 9 million households for a year. California is also investing in desalination plants, although some plants are currently only generating potable water for tens of thousands of households and therefore aren't at the scale of water production currently needed. The agriculture industry, knowing it's facing less water allocations in future years if droughts continue, has continuously found ways for more efficient irrigation techniques, such as drip irrigation and installing moisture sensors to optimize water usage. America engineered its way into this water crisis by damming every river and pumping its water into America's desert. So surely it can engineer its way out, right? If you're interested in learning more about the American West and its water crisis, I highly recommend reading Cadillac Desert by Mark Reisner. You can buy the book through the affiliate link I'll list in the video description below. Subscribe if you're interested in more land use videos.